one o'clock news from the BBC with Philip Hayton. Margaret Thatcher is resigning as leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister. Before leaving number 10 to see the Queen, she told her cabinet, it's a funny old world. The Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd will now stand in the second ballot. The Chancellor, John Major, also enters the leadership fray for what they both call a friendly contest. Michael Heseltine pays tribute to Mrs Thatcher's remarkable premiership. Labour's leader, Neil Kinnock, calls the resignation, resignation very good news and demands an immediate general election. Good afternoon. At 7.30 this morning, it's understood, Margaret Thatcher made up her mind. And at 9 o'clock, when senior ministers gathered around her at number 10, she told them what she'd do. She'd remain Prime Minister only until Conservatives had elected a new party leader. She'd already informed the Queen by telephone that she wouldn't contest the second ballot next Tuesday. Mrs Thatcher said it was rather a funny old world when she'd won three elections for the Conservatives and she still believed she had the overwhelming support of Tories across the country. The reason for the Prime Minister's resignation, she said, was to enable Cabinet colleagues to enter the ballot. And soon after 11 came the news that two senior ministers, Douglas Hurd and John Major, had joined the race. Including Michael Heseltine, there'll now be three candidates for Mrs Thatcher's job. Our first report is from our political correspondent, Lance Price, who's been in Downing Street all morning. The first to hear of Mrs Thatcher's decision was her parliamentary private secretary, Peter Morrison. He arrived at Downing Street at 7.30 this morning, shortly followed by John Wakeham, who only yesterday was appointed her campaign manager. By this time, the palace had been informed of her decision, but as cabinet ministers started arriving for their nine o'clock meeting, it was clear that most were still in the dark. Are you still behind the Prime Minister, Mr Waterbury? Yes, ma'am. Mrs Thatcher saw most of her cabinet individually last night. The majority told her that while they would continue to support her, they didn't think she could win. Many urged her to open the way for other members of the cabinet to put themselves forward. She told them it was a funny old world, she'd won three general elections, had the overwhelming support of the party in the country and of a majority of MPs, but her future was still in doubt. Douglas Hurd was already known to want her to withdraw, and as soon as the cabinet was together, she told them that that was her decision. She read out her prepared statement that she was going in the interests of party unity and to improve the prospects of a general election victory. She thanked her colleagues for their support and said she hoped that one of their number would succeed her. As soon as the meeting broke up, the party chairman gave his a, reaction. This is a typically brave and selfless decision by the Prime Minister. Uh, once again, Margaret Thatcher has put her country's and party's interests before personal considerations. This will allow the party to elect a new leader who will unite the party and build upon her immense successes. If I could add just a personal note, I am very saddened indeed that our greatest peacetime Prime Minister has left government. Uh, she is an outstanding leader not only of our country and of the world, and I do not believe we will see her like again. Flowers continued to arrive at Downing Street this morning, whether in support or hasty commiseration wasn't clear. But one of her closest cabinet allies expressed his personal disappointment. It's a very sad day. She's done a tremendous job for the country and she has decided in the best interest of the uh, country, the government and the party that it would be best for her to stand down. And what is her, what is her mood? Well, uh, her, her mood is, uh, like always, she does her duty. She's, uh, of course she's sad, of course she's sad, but uh, she has remarkable powers of recovery. And I've had a look at the speech for this afternoon, and it's a pretty good speech. What? Cabinet ministers had stayed behind after their officials left to discuss who might stand. There was a clear desire that whatever else happened, the party must come together. In cabinet, uh, both uh, during the cabinet itself, uh, obviously I was there, and in the short informal gathering thereafter as colleagues who'd soldiered together for many years together, sat over a cup of coffee reflecting on events, before we went out to resume the fight to get this party and this government back on the rails and to continue the work that we've been devoting ourselves to for so long. Our main feeling would be one of immense gratitude uh, for what she has done for our country and our party in a remarkable career as Prime Minister. The uncertainty about who would stand continued right up to the 12 o'clock deadline. There was talk that Norman Tebbit was considering his position. 
but he decided against, leaving no candidate from the traditional right of the party in the field. So when nominations closed just over an hour ago, it was a three-horse race. Mr Hesseltine will face the Foreign Secretary, Douglas Hurd, and the Chancellor, Mr Major, in the second ballot on Tuesday. And that raises the prospect of a third ballot a week today if no candidate gets an overall majority. Mrs Thatcher left Downing Street for the palace just after half past 12, having sent personal messages to President Bush, President Gorbachev and other world leaders. She's still Prime Minister, ready to defend the government at question time and in the no-confidence debate this afternoon. But Mrs Thatcher will return to the palace next week to surrender her seals of office and end her 11 and a half years as Her Majesty's Prime Minister. Mr. Hurd was proposed for the party leadership by the Environment Secretary Chris Patton and was seconded by Tom King, the Defence Secretary. A short time ago, he came out of the Foreign Office to announce his candidacy. He acknowledged that he'll be in competition with his friend and strong colleague, John Major, but he had this to say about his own bid for the leadership. Prime Minister announced a very sad decision this morning. I believe the overriding need now is for the Conservative Party to find a leader who can unite it in handling present problems and in winning the next general election. That's the message coming in from Conservatives in all parts of the party, all parts of the country. Division can spell disaster. I believe that I can do that, and that is why I'm putting my name forward. I can believe that I can unite the party in handling present problems and in winning the next general election. Michael Heseltine's first response after hearing the news of Mrs Thatcher's withdrawal was to pay tribute to her leadership. He said she'd make it a remarkable contribution to Britain's history. He was speaking at an acorn planting ceremony and added that nothing could be more indicative of his attitude to the permanence of the Conservative Party. Michael Heseltine heard the news of the Prime Minister's resignation as he was driving to London Zoo for a long-standing engagement to join school children planting acorns. He delayed his arrival for 15 minutes to prepare his reaction. May I say at once that this brings to an end a quite remarkable premiership. She has made a remarkable contribution to Britain's history and has led this country with great distinction in the 1980s. The resignation about which we've just heard now opens the way for an election for the vacancy of leader of the Conservative Party, which will enable others to come forward. I very much welcome that. I would expect my own name to be still there, as uh, it has already been nominated, and uh, we will then find a way of uniting the Conservative Party and of going on to win the next general election. As he left, cutting short his visit, he refused to answer any questions or give any hint as to how his campaign tactics will have to change now that it's no longer a straight fight between himself and Mrs Thatcher. But he kept his other scheduled appointment of the morning, despite the turmoil within the Tory party, and attended the memorial service at Westminster Abbey for Lady Hume. Mrs Thatcher had decided not to go to the service. She was represented by her husband, Dennis, and her parliamentary private secretary, Peter Morrison, the first of her advisers, to hear of her resignation decision. The leading figures of Mrs Thatcher's 11 and a half years in power were there. Lord Whitelaw, Kenneth Baker, and Sir Geoffrey Howe, whose resignation and speech in the Commons led Mr Heseltine to challenge for the leadership, and which ultimately forced her to stand down.